Good evening and welcome to worship. Yep. Hmm? Okay. I have two announcements for, before we begin this evening. The first involves something I want us all to practice. So on page seven, we will be, in, in, instead of doing ashes this year, because for me, ashes require human touch, we're going to be making the sign of the cross on our foreheads. So you'll take your thumb or your um, index finger, and at the, when I, at the name of the Trinity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, okay? The line will be, we, we make the sign of the cross on our foreheads, remembering that we belong to God. Let's practice. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just so we, you don't get caught by surprise at that part. Also, please wait to open your communion bags until you're invited to do so. Take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Jesus was determined to journey to Jerusalem despite knowing he would soon face his own death. Please stand for our call to worship. We are invited into the story, into this place, into this hour of worship. We are invited into reflection, into community, into our own spiritual journeys. We are invited the broken and the bruised, the hopeful, the new, the faithful, the doubting, the wondering, the waiting. We are invited because God so loved. So listen, trust the invitation, and bring your whole self. All are invited here. Let us pray. Creator God, there, there is, is a rumbling, rumbling in us that, that won't let, let go. It stirs in us like the wind stirs leaves, inviting us to move, drawing us forth. When, when we're, we're quiet, quiet, we, we know, know that, that rumble is, is the Holy Spirit, Spirit dancing, dancing love awake, awake in us. us. So we're here, and, and we're, we're still, still, and we're quiet. And on, on this first day of Lent, we're, we're asking, asking you to draw near. near. As we hear your word proclaimed in scripture, sermon, and song, and, and as we receive, receive your holy supper, open the door for us to move. Invite us in, in rumble, rumble us awake. awake. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture reading this evening is from Psalm 5. Please read responsibly. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of mine enemies. Make your way straight before me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll speak the gospel welcome together. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messenger messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do what you want to come down from heaven and consume them. But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, 
but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Paul and Silas, bound in jail, had no money for their bail. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. Paul and Silas thought they was lost. Dungeon shook and the chains come off. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. I'd like you to join in singing the chorus with me. Hold on. Hold on, keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. This folk song from the Civil Rights Movement is based on one of the great black American spirituals, Gospel Plow. And just as the spirituals were based not just in hope for spiritual freedom, but in tangible physical freedom, beginning in this world, in this life. So this song encouraged perseverance and endurance in the face of great opposition, difficulty, and suffering. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on. That's what Jesus is doing in our reading from Luke. His face is dead set toward Jerusalem. His eyes are on the prize, but the prize is a strange one. It isn't the destruction of his enemies or his visible enthronement. The prize is his death, and he knows it. By this point in Luke, Jesus has twice told his disciples that he will be arrested and killed. He implores them, let these words sink into your ears. The Son of Man will be handed over to human hands. So set aside what you learned in confirmation class for a moment and ask yourself, why in the world would Jesus do this? Imagine for a moment, you're one of the disciples. You're not one of the inner circle. You didn't see the transfiguration, but you've been following Jesus for quite a while now. After Peter tells Jesus, you are the Christ, Things take a, a really ominous turn, it seems. Frightening. Jesus suddenly talks about being betrayed, about being killed, about the necessity of taking up your cross and following him. You might be wondering in the back of your mind whether you backed the wrong horse. Is Jesus different? Or is he going to get himself and you killed? Opposition even marks the beginning of the journey. You first have to pass through Samaria. You're no fan of the Samaritans, but then again, no Jew is, like yourself is, and you need a place to spend the night. When you get to the village, they ask where you're going. You say, Jerusalem, and they, the conversation's over at that point. They want nothing to do with you. Perhaps it's out of ethnic or religious prejudice. After all, the issue that divided and still divides Samaritans and Jews is where to worship. Jerusalem 
or Mount Gerizim. In their view, Jesus is going to the wrong place. But on the other hand, maybe their inhospitality is motivated by something a little more primal. Maybe it's motivated by fear. Everyone knows how the empire deals not only with would-be revolutionaries, but those who harbor them. You watch James and John throw a little tantrum, then you continue on your way. And then imagine, you come across several people on your way to Jerusalem, and they say they're going to follow. But they have to just do this one thing first. They always have something to do first. Being someone who's been with Jesus from the beginning, you might not have much patience for these folks. Perhaps even less than you had for the Samaritans. Jesus' words to you, you know, sound harsh, but on point, which is pretty much like a lot of things Jesus says. Are they going to follow or not? But then you remember what Jesus said before that he was going to die. And your stomach turns. It would be really hard to keep your eyes on the prize if you were in the disciples' shoes, especially when the prize seems to be just a boatload of suffering. The prize, however, is not betrayal and death. It was unclear to the disciples, and truth be told, it can be unclear to us, even post-Easter. But Jesus is looking beyond his suffering, beyond his death, to the new life in God's family that will be available to all. He's looking forward to the liberation of God's people from sin, death, and the devil, a liberation that will be given even to a crucified bandit beside him. He's looking forward to the new universal outreach of the gospel, not just to one nation or one people or ethnic group or skin color, but that encompasses all peoples, all nations, all races. Even though the way to Jerusalem is not a straight line in Luke, and even though there is suffering on the way, suffering is not the end of the story. The end of the story is the inauguration of the kingdom of God in a family of faith whose mission field is the entire world. That's the prize of Jesus' journey and our journey. The inauguration of the kingdom in a family of faith. A family much like this one. As we begin Lent, we remember that our journey through life, like Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, has an end. We are mortal. We remember that we are dust and that we will return to dust. But the prize of God's kingdom permeates the journey and overshadows our mortality. Our liberation from everything that sets us apart from God is accomplished in Jesus. And every step of the way, Jesus is leading us into the freedom of that new life. Freedom's name is mighty sweet, and soon we're all gonna meet. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. I got my hand on the gospel plow. Won't take nothing for my journey now. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. Amen.
For our song of the day, we're going to sing it a little bit differently than we usually do. It is a call and response. And if you look at the words with me, the first two lines, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. I heard the voice of Jesus say, behold, I freely give. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Hearing the voice of Jesus. The last two lines, I came to Jesus as I was. I came to Jesus and I drank. I looked to Jesus and I found. So we're going to have the men sing with Pastor David on the first two lines on the call, and the women sing with Emily and Catherine over here on the response for each of the verses. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn and sad. I found him in a resting place, and he I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I look to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are You may stand. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God to love one another and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. You may be seated. Most holy and merciful God, we, we confess, confess to you and to one, one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our, our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, thought word, and deed, by what, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, O God. God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, O God. God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O God. God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O God. God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O God. God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, O God. God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear, Hear us, O God, God, for your mercy is great. On Ash Wednesday, we traditionally receive ashes to symbolize two things, our continual need for repentance and our mortality. The reception of ashes by, is by nature an embodied ritual. The imposition of ashes on the forehead or hand by touch reminds us that we are creatures who exist in a body, subject to everything that entails, pain and pleasure, sickness and health, life and death. Because of the pandemic, we cannot participate in this ritual the way it was intended. In lieu of ashes, I invite you to join me in this declaration and prayer. We make the sign of the cross on our foreheads, remembering that we belong to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You formed us, O God, out of the dust of the ground, and, and yet, yet you, you have, have also formed, formed us in your image. image. We all share in a common mortality, destined to return to the dust we came from. And yet we also share in a common redemption, Designed to return life. Change our hearts, O Christ. That we may love others as you love us. Change our minds, O Christ. That our thoughts may reflect the dignity you hold for all creatures. Change our words, O Christ. That, that our speech may reflect your glory. Change our deeds, O Christ. That our hands and feet may be yours. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation that we may show forth your glory in the world by the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen. Eternal God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for your church around the world, for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and the Northwestern Minnesota Synod, for our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, and for our staff, David, Ruth, and Amber, and for Shalom's Congregation Council, Angie, Brian, Ken, Kim, Tammy, Jaron, Tyler, Arnie, and Isabel. Send your Holy Spirit to guide them in their ministry as they work for your kingdom. Faithful God, hear our prayer. We all allow worries and distractions to consume us from time to time. Keep us focused on you and teach us to trust that we will be led step by step 
through all adversity and challenge. Faithful God, hear our prayer. May the reminder of our human limitations humble us, but not drive us to despair. May the frailty of this existence compel us to live each day that we are given to the fullest. Faithful God, hear our prayer. There is now no turning back the clock on what state to which we've brought this earth through our negligence and lack of imagination. But lead us to explore and to discover new pathways to restoration and preservation of what remains for the sake of creation and for our future existence within it. Faithful God, hear our prayer. Forgive us when we do not make time for those who truly need us, O oh Lord, and turn us away from our trivial concerns and towards the world around us. We remember this time of struggle around the world, all of those affected by COVID-19. We pray for those who are ill and for those who take care of them, for those who struggle economically, and for those who provide leadership, counsel, and comfort. Heal those who cry out to you, especially Ray, Tom, Jim, Connie, Skip, Norm, Phyllis, Lisa, Faith, Audrey, Michelle, John, Carrie, Dean, Jan, Chris, Jack, Rosella, Jim, Latella and the family, and family of Vi. We also remember these people in our hearts silently or aloud. Faithful God, hear our prayer. All the saints who have gone before us now rest in your eternal glory. Make us worthy to join them on that day when we are all called to our heavenly home. Faithful God, hear our prayer. For those who are mourning or in pain, especially those affected by the shooting in Buffalo, for those who are cold, without electricity or power, whose cupboards are bare, who have no water in their homes, especially for the many people across Texas. Send them relief. Send them helpers, Lord. Faithful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hold us close and those for whom we pray even closer, O oh God. We offer up these requests for relying on your grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may be seated for a moment. Thank you once again for your, um, your amazing, continued, and, very, and faithful support of the mission at Shalom. For those of you who are here, the offering there is an offering basket in the back. For those of you who are at home, there are three ways that you can support the mission here. They are up there on your screen. If you have questions, please contact the church office. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. with every 
Christ to lead, and we shall follow, stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, we the river, you the sea, we the river, you the sea. Please stand as we offer up our offertory prayer. Let us pray, faithful God. We offer to you all that we can give, even though it is only a shadow of what we owe you. Bless and use these gifts for the best purposes of your earthly kingdom, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The night of his betrayal, our Lord took bread. He blessed it as he broke it, and then he said, My body broken for you is what this means. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. And then he took the chalice and raised it high. My blood is given for you, a full supply, a covenant, a promise, a cleansing stream. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. We share this food together, remembering Christ. We share a common treasure and all the price. We share it without measure, a gift of love. We share a life forever with God. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and, and deliver us from evil. evil. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power and, the and the glory are yours, yours now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. As often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As you receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, remember that it is for you for the forgiveness of your sins. 
You may be seated and you may open your bags at this time. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks for seating us at your table and, and serving us with the food of eternal life. life. We who once were dead are now living members of your Son, awakened by the breathing of your spirit. Send us out to awaken others to the mystery of your love, which is revealed to all the world in the one who came to give himself away, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit.